Okay, so well done. So far, your old score is 100. Who attempted it? Per se. If it's going away from you at uh, 2 meters per second, the frequency changes by 1.18 higher. And if it's going away from you, it changes by 1.17 lower. Okay, so here's a way they could com complicate it for you because they don't like you getting 100 per second. They could give you a graph. And here's a frequency of 1, uh, 200 and 201, 18. And here's a frequency of 198,83. This is frequency in hertz. And this is time in seconds. <laughs> Now, do you see that that graph I took from those values? Do you see that? This is like you're recording the frequency. At first, the frequency was 2018, and then the frequency dropped to that, 198,83. So what do you think is going to be the question if they give you that graph? By how much did it decrease? That would be too easy if you would just multi subtract the two. Find the time it took. They're not interested in the time it took because this is Doppler. What do you think you could work out from that graph? What do you think sits smack in the middle here? So this is the frequency of the listener. Is that the frequency when it's coming towards you? When it's towards you, what is this? This is the frequency of the listener when it's away from you. What do you think smack in the middle is going to be? The frequency of the so that is a possible question. So what do you do? Do you just go to the middle between the two and there's the frequency of the source? Add it together divided by two. You see, that's what I thought you could do when I first saw the problem three years ago. But for the reason I gave here, yeah, because it doesn't rise by the same amount as it falls when it's moving towards you, it rises by more coming towards you, it falls by less going away from you. To get an approximate answer, it's going to be 200. That's the halfway between them, approximately. But then you've got to figure it out mathematically. Anyone know how you could work this out mathematically? Well, you love maths. On record, I'm not that fond of maths. If you know me, you know I'm not that fond of maths. But there is a way of figuring out how do you find the frequency of the source from that data. It's a thing called <laughs> equations. Simultaneous equations. Who likes simultaneous equations? Anyone like simultaneous Okay. So I'm not alone. But could you work out two equations that involve the frequency of the source using that formula? Given the data that we have. Have we got a... So we make frequency of the source we do for... This for that value using uh, the frequency that the listener uses. We know that that we know that they will give you all the rest, but they will ask you to find the frequency of the source which they won't give you. But they will give you that, 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 and that from a graph. I think. Okay. But anyway, you work out the two. This is frequency of the source when it's coming towards, you fill in all the values, and then you do it again for coming 
away from you and that, that frequency there. You put the two together and then you work out, you can work out the frequency of the, sorry, online. What do they give you from that graph? Is it the frequency of the source or the frequency of the listener? That's the listener. So you plug in that value there and then you plug that value in another simultaneous equation and then you can work out the frequency of the source from that. Does that make sense? That's a very cool tripod, sir. So yeah. You I did. But you know, like, a <laughs> like everything in life, it was giving me grief today. It was sliding. So I put some uh, prit on the legs. So now it's a bit stickier. So it's not collapsing like a cheap suit. <laughs> How many of you would like to try that using simultaneous equations? See if you can go from that graph back to finding the frequency of the source, which should be 200. So what, what, have, what can I give you? I can give you the frequency of the, no, I can't give you that. That you've got to find out. Then I can give you the frequency of the listener is from the graph. The velocity of a source is known. You have to know the velocity of a source. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just, someone just help me out here. If I give you all that, good morning, man. Hi, sir, how are you? I'm well, yourself? I'm very well, thank you. you. I'm living in a movie. The dispenser of. Yes, and so I'm sorry because um, as they were in the language classes, then I, I ran out. And now I'm just running around to make sure you do receive your gift of life. Who did not get a sanitizer? Don't be shy now. You all have the sanitizers? Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I think you should ask them to count. How many times have they been sanitized today? Yeah. Is it more than five? Sanitize right now. Sanitize right now. Sanitize. <laughs> Okay, add one. Be wise, oh, I'm going oh, to have to post this up tomorrow for you, Mr. Be wise, sanitize. Yeah. We'll make a video. Will you also uh, scream at me, sir? No, this girl, she practiced yesterday with screaming. Can we do a little bit of a thing here, girl? Screw at me up. Oh, is, is, is that a real sanitizer or is that just the odor? Yes, my awful voice is left in it. Okay, science question. Can alcohol be absorbed through the skin? Ah, I'm recording. <laughs> the lesson. Can alcohol be absorbed through the skin? Mm. Have any of you felt any effect of that alcohol on your brain since being sprayed? I was never near alcohol. Well, <laughs> the good stuff is over 70, the good sanitizer is over 70%. This doesn't give the percentage, but it's got, but it's not ethanol, it's probably some other yes, alcohol. Yes. But an interesting thing is um, people try to make home brews. I'm sure you read about it and heard about it during the lockdown. They decided to make their own home brew. And then a whole lot of people died. And why is that? Sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they, they might have got it all wrong in terms of how much alcohol they used or what the chemical re reaction between your ginger beer or your, uh, what did they use, pineapple uh, beer and alcohol and how it works. So people are not wise, chemically wise, and so they do all sorts of things. Right? There used yeah. to be a program called Moonshiners on DSTV. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Now, depending on if you use corn or whatever you use, it creates a little bit of methanol. Now, that is deadly poison. So what the Moonshiners do is that first distillation, that first cup or two they throw away, that's the methanol that 
boils or first, then the rest they could drink. But if you don't know that, you're going to maybe blind yourself. Dukes of Hazard. I think that's part of the Dukes of Hazard. I'm sure some of you saw the movie. But uh, I hope you can cut also some parts out and not just put the whole thing, because I was doing a whole lot of and now not your okay, we'll we'll do some strict cutting. <laughs> just just guys think about it. If they give you all of that, do you need a you don't need a simultaneous equation? What do you think ballistics are? Ballistics like really ballistics on There must be something more that they leave out. There's got to be two unknowns. So one of those unknowns must, there must be something else unknown here. I'll, I'll get you a question. One of the sources of navigation could be just one more than one unknown. If there's only one unknown, which is the frequency of the source, and you've got all the others, you don't need a simultaneous question. So I'll have to get a, a real question. You can't. But so you put each one in two sets, there's going to be two if it's that's unknown. There's got to be two unknowns, yeah. So we'll get a question, but that's one way that they make it complicated. Here's another way they can make it complicated. They don't tell you the frequency of the butterfly, uh, the mozzie. Where is it here? The velocity of the source. Uh, the frequency of the source. Yeah, they don't tell you that it's 200. You know what they do? They give you the period of the. They give you the period. <laughs> so if this is the frequency, and they were going to give you the period, what is period? It's one upon two hundred. One two hundred. So instead of giving you the frequency of the source, they may give you t. The period equals 1 200 of a second. Now, will that confuse you? Will that confuse you? Definitely. And that's how they've been bringing down the marks effectively over the years. But is it, is it a reason to be confused? Yes. No, no. Everything is confusing, I agree. But if we know this formula, that that is equal to 1 upon that, and that lambda equals 1 upon t. We're not going to, or they may give you the velocity and the wavelength, but they don't give you the frequency. How about that? You see that? They could give you the velocity of sound is 340. Equals, they don't give you the frequency, but they give you the wavelength of the sound is, let's say, 1.5 meters. Now you've got to work out something from that. That is the only way they can make this section complicated. So, when you say they effectively brought down the curve, did they get gold? Do you know that for years, Doppler was just easy? But then they go through a little, the department goes through phases. And for the last two years, they've been making Doppler more difficult. I expect them to put some step between you and just a simple answer this year. But why, so we already have a Doppler, right? Well, <laughs> Did you guys, do you want every Tom, Dick, and Harry to do physics? And pass? <laughs> Do you notice there's only 18 out of 107 of you doing physics? Why? Because they put little stumbling blocks in the way. Otherwise, every Tom, Dick and Harry would be doing physics and getting 100%. You chose the difficult subject. They, they're not going to make it too easy. I disagree completely. I would give you just a straight thing. That's me, because I'm very kind of generous. And I don't believe in throwing stumbling blocks in the way of students. But, <laughs> but, if they give you period instead of wavelength, that's fair. That actually is fair. Because you know how to, you must be able to convert between frequency and wavelength. Yeah. If they give you period, you must be able to convert to wavelength. And that's the only way they can complicate it.
Okay, so, do you guys want to go to your, we're going to go to our textbooks, but talk, I think most of you, who's got their textbooks and who's got that workbook? Both. Both? Let me just get the textbook. You see, my problem with the workbook is to give the answers. That is my, that's the, if, the, if that workbook didn't give you so much, I would work on it. But, okay. Can, would you mind if I just complete the Doppler section? There's new work that I just want to tell you now. I think it's still recording. Is it still recording? And then I will give you some work. Okay, let's just complete Doppler now once and for all. Okay. Have you guys heard that the universe is expanding? Yes. How many have not heard that the universe is expanding? Who has not heard that the universe is expanding? And this is new to you today. Okay. How do they know the universe is expanding? Because of the red shift. Now, Matthew, explain what is the red shift? So, when light stretches, the frequency gets smaller and it, everything goes farther away. You look into the universe, the more the energy becomes. So, so, just tell me if I'm correct, Matthew. Here's the universe. It's a balloon. Here's my lips blowing it up. Consider it God's lips, if you like. <laughs> Here is light from a distant star, and it's coming towards Earth. There's Africa, with our Meerkat satellite and our salt and our, all our good stuff. Okay. Now, do you see that there is a certain wavelength? Frequency and wavelength. Now, if we blow the universe up, now the wavelength stretches like that as the balloon stretches. Does that make sense? Can you see that the wavelength is now bigger or smaller? Bigger wa wavelength. What's the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Have we mentioned it? Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Now, whenever you see two numbers, two things on the same side of the equation, what's the relationship? Directly or inversely? Let's get them to the other side. Let's divide both sides by frequency. What's the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Wavelength equals velocity upon frequency. What's the relationship here? Now they're on other sides of the equal sign. Directly or inversely? I lost you there. What am I doing? Okay, watch this. Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. What is the relationship between frequency and wavelength? How do we do it? To tell a relationship, they've got to be on opposite sides of the equal sign. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So to get, I'll do it differently. Let's get wavelength to the opposite side of the equal sign. So I divide both sides by wavelength. Wavelength cancels out frequency equals velocity upon wavelength. Can you now see the relationship? That's on top. That's on the bottom. Inverse. So the bigger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. Okay, so now, let's go back to this. Here is light. Let's say it was blue light. Because blue light's got a short frequency. Now, if it travels, as it travels through space, and God is blowing up the universe, the wavelength stretches from blue 
in what we got blue, the nickel is green, yellow, orange, and finally it ends up a red. By the time it gets to earth, it's been so stretched it's now red. It's stretched out. And that is what we call what Matthew says is the red shifted light. Light from the most distant stars is very red. Light from closer stars is more blue or whatever. It's the color that it was when it left. But the more longer it's traveling through space, the more space has stretched it and the redder it becomes. And if it stretches even more, it goes into the microwave, uh, infrared wave. Sorry, sir. Um, there were some of the learners that weren't able to go to their lockers or that were here for the first or here for the first time today. Is there anybody in here? <laughs> All right, so if I could just, sorry for the interruption. No problem. Okay, if you have you one at a time, please, sir. Can I leave this? Yay, reunited with your life, your books. Does, does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Now, if the universe was not expanding, who could explain to me? If the light that left was blue, it would arrive blue. If it was green when it left from the whatever star, it would be green when it arrived. Okay, now let's suppose the universe was shrinking. Air is coming out of this balloon. What would happen to this balloon if it got smaller? What would happen to those waves? They would become closer together. And the closer they become, anybody that would like to have the same way from the left hand, anybody in? Okay, so there is that. Now, mm, how do you know that light is from somewhere far away in the universe? How do you know? Well, how do you know it's not just around the block? How do you know that it's not there, just there, close? Any ideas? No. Have any of you looked through a binocular? How do you know when you look through a binocular that something is far away? Because you need a binocular to see it. <laughs> so, and the bigger the binocular, the further you can see. 